As a huge fan of Transformers War for Cybertron released in 2010 and Transformers Fall of Cybertron released in 2012, I firmly believe that these two games absolutely deserve a remaster and a re-release. Both games captured the essence of the Transformers universe in a way no other game has. They set a high bar for storytelling, gameplay, and respect for the source material, which is why they remain so beloved by the fanbase today. Starscream wouldn't fight with such desperation if the legends weren't true. Lord Megatron, you're certain it's here? I am certain, Barricade. And when I find it, the balance of this war with the Autobots will finally tip in my favor. When War for Cybertron hit shelves back in 2010, it was a breath of fresh air for Transformers fans. After years of lackluster adaptions and mediocre tie-ins to the Michael Bay films, War for Cybertron gave us something special. An authentic, original story that took us deep into the heart of the Transformers' home planet, Cybertron. This wasn't a side story or a throwaway adventure. This was the beginning of the iconic civil war between Autobots and Decepticons. It showed the brutal reality of the conflict, far removed from the Earth-based skirmishes many of us were used to from the cartoons and movies. The Decepticons control the airwaves. The only secure way to communicate is by messenger. I volunteered. Name's Bumblebee. I need to find the Autobot called Optimus. I have important information for him. I am Optimus. Critically, War for Cybertron did extremely well. It received a 9 out of 10 from IGN and was praised for its compelling narrative, its exciting combat mechanics, and its stunning depiction of a crumbling Cybertron. The campaign mode, which allowed players to take control of iconic characters like Optimus Prime and Megatron, was a dream come true for longtime fans. And the co-op mode was the icing on the cake, letting players experience the story with their friends. But what really set the game apart was how fluid the transformation between robot and vehicle modes felt. Switching back and forth wasn't just a gimmick. It was a core part of the gameplay and made you feel like you were truly embodying a Transformer. Then, just two years later, we got Fall of Cybertron, a sequel that somehow managed to raise the bar even higher. Released in 2012 to even more critical acclaim, Fall of Cybertron may have received an 8.5 out of 10 from IGN, but it took everything that was great about the first game and improved upon it. You are the cause. I am the solution. You deserve no less than the oblivion I will bring to you. Goodbye, Prime. Megatron, wait. The story picked up at the darkest point in the war, and we got to witness the Autobots' desperate final days on their home planet. From the emotional weight of Optimus Prime's decision to evacuate Cybertron, to the high-stakes battles fought by Grimlock and the Dinobots, the game gave us an intense cinematic experience that deepened our connection to the characters. Gameplay-wise, Fall of Cybertron was incredibly polished. The combat was fast-paced and smooth, with each character offering a unique playstyle that fit perfectly into the larger narrative. Excellent shockwave! Trypticon's conversion into the Nemesis spaceship is now complete. We will be launching for the portal shortly. I want you to stay behind to manage things on this end. As you wish, Megatron. Shockwave out. No one controls Grimlock! Grimlock's sections were a standout, as they allowed us to experience the raw power of one of the franchise's most iconic characters. The multiplayer component also deserves a lot of credit. It was deep, engaging, and full of customization options. Players could create their own Transformers, choosing their class and abilities, and dive into battles that were every bit as thrilling as the campaign. Whether you were a scout, soldier, scientist, or titan, there was a role for everyone, and the balance between classes was excellent. I'm sure we can all agree that the multiplayer mode helped extend the life of the game long after you'd finished the campaign. But beyond the gameplay and graphics, the heart of what made War for Cybertron and Fall of Cybertron so special was their story. The sooner we launch the Ark, the better. Optimus, take whatever spark that remains within me. Use it to light your way across the stars. Metroplex, my friend. You don't have to do this. There's no guarantee you have enough energy on to even get us to the space bridge. This is my choice. These games took the rich lore of the Transformers universe and brought it to life in a way that no film or TV show had managed to do at the time. We got to see Cybertron in its final days, a world ravaged by war, 
teetering on the edge of destruction. The games delved into the moral complexities of the Autobots' struggle, showing that even the heroes were flawed and desperate. Meanwhile, the Decepticons were portrayed as more than just generic villains. They had motivations, rivalries, and their own internal conflicts. These two games gave us a Transformers story with depth, emotion, and stakes. And as a fan, these games were everything I could have wanted. They weren't just mindless action or nostalgic cash grabs. They were well-crafted, thoughtful explorations of the Transformers universe. They expanded on the lore and gave fans a better understanding of the war that defines so much of the franchise's history. Even if you destroy me, Megatron, others will rise to defeat your tyranny. Then I'll just have to destroy you all! And the fanbase's love for these games is still alive, and for good reason. War for Cybertron and Fall of Cybertron brought people back into the Transformers world, in a way that felt meaningful. It wasn't just about nostalgia. These games stood on their own as excellent pieces of entertainment. Even now, fans reminisce about the tight combat, the impressive graphics for their time, and the characters we all connected with on a deeper level. They had a massive impact on the Transformers community, and there's still a strong demand to see them return. A remaster of these two games would not only appeal to old fans who grew up playing them, but would also introduce a new generation of players to this incredible chapter in Transformers history. Imagine, War for Cybertron and Fall of Cybertron with modern-day graphics, improved controls, and enhanced multiplayer capabilities. These games were ahead of their time in terms of design and execution, and with today's technology they could be truly spectacular. Re-releasing them would also allow new fans, who might have missed these games the first time around, to experience the definitive Transformers video game experience. Many gamers today are familiar with the franchise from the films like Transformers 1 or Rise of the Beast and TV shows like Transformers Prime, but the War for Cybertron series provides a richer, more mature look at the universe that can only be appreciated in its entirety. A remaster would ensure that these stories live on not just as fond memories, but as modern, playable experiences. In the end, it's about preserving a piece of gaming history. War for Cybertron and Fall of Cybertron were lightning in a bottle, capturing everything that makes Transformers great. Bringing these games back in a remastered collection would give them the recognition they deserve and remind the world just how epic the Transformers saga can be when it's done right. To wrap things up, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Do you think War for Cybertron and Fall of Cybertron deserve a remaster and re-release? And what were your favorite moments from these two games? Let me know your thoughts in the comments and don't forget to like this video and sub to the channel for more. And I'll see you guys next time. Optimus, Megatron is still out there. And as long as we remain here, we shall resist him. But in time, our turn will come to leave Cybertron as well. I have commissioned a new galactic transport for us, an Ark in which we shall make our journey through the stars. No matter where we go, Cybertron will be with us.